Welcome to the Elite Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group, bringing you interviews with the best real estate and mortgage professionals, empowering you to understand the current trends in the housing market so that you make the American dream your reality. Enjoy today's episode. Welcome to the Elite Real Estate Leaders Podcast. Today, we have with us Tim Tackle, who's the co-founder and senior loan officer at DNVR Lending. Tim, welcome to the program. Great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. So I want to hear all about what you do and how you do it and uh, who you do it for. But um, get us started with your story, background, and how'd you get into the industry? Yeah, thanks. Uh, Kind of uh, probably not the most traditional way. I was an officer in the Navy for about six years, served out in San Diego from 2009 to about 2015, and then decided to make a switch, get out of the military, took a job actually with Vail Resorts, uh, their corporate headquarters in Broomfield. Um, did that for about 10 months and a good buddy of mine, Joey, was doing loans. Um, he was getting out of the Navy and was joining a team and was pretty much said, hey, I know you're not super happy there and come join me over here. And I did it, you know, and it was a little scary yep. jumping into a commission only job. Yeah. Um, from, you know, six years in the Navy getting, say, a paycheck every two weeks. Same thing with, you know, working in a corporate uh, position. But yeah, haven't looked back since. Yeah. that. So talk a little bit about that. There's two transitions that I am sensing there. One, from military to civilian life. And then two, from your salaried position to a whole other industry that's commission only. So what was the transitions like and how did you deal with kind of the ups and downs and tenuous uncertainties that went along with those? Yeah, it's a great question and probably more relevant for today's market, you know, just being a down market and not having the volume that we're typically used to. Um, so I'll, I'll touch on the military transition. Um, I mean, I went to the Naval Academy, joined, so four-year university, which is all pretty much just being in the military. So from yeah. about 18 to gosh, 20 something, all I knew was military um, and that lifestyle and that structure. So getting out of the military was a big transition, just adjusting to, I always tell the story of, you know, my first weekend at working at Vail Resorts, I was going to Austin for my buddy's birthday. And in the military, if you ever leave, if they call it leave, you know, taking a leave to go somewhere, you know, if you go out a certain radius from your base, you have to put in a request you have to let all your senior leadership know where you're going. And you know, so I met with my manager the day before I was leaving. I was like, hey, so I'm going to Austin. Is there anything I need to sign or like check it out with anything? Or <laughs> like kind of looked at me funny. I was like, well, have fun in Austin. And I mean, show up to work on Monday. <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> right. that was welcome, you know, welcome to civilian life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that that shift and that mentality of, you know, uh, I guess that freedom was a new found. Uh, joy for me. Um, So that was a a big transition, um, just that military to civilian. And I I really appreciate my time at Vail Resorts and it allowed me to grow and learn. I was on a marketing team there. So really good to see kind of how a company, a Fortune 500 company at a high level operates um, kind of not on the sidelines, but, you know, uh, as a part of their marketing team. So that was really cool. Um, And then that transition from Veil to being a loan officer, that salary position, obviously it was super scary. You know, anybody that's been in in our industry or has gone into a commission only role, whether it's real estate title or loan officer um, or just sales in general that has no base. uh, There is a, there's a certain, you know, scarcity or I guess uh, fear there. I guess yeah. scarcity too, you know, how many deals are out there? How do I get those deals? How to capitalize on that? How to make myself stand out amongst the thousand other loan officers that are trying to do the same thing I'm doing. Um, but you just, I know, kind of find your groove, find how, how you interact well with people or not. Um, and that's what I tell our loan officers is, you know, don't look at other people that are doing well as, you know, a good model, but don't try to mimic them because if you try to mimic them, it's not going to come out as original for you. And that's something that I really had to learn and apply for me, you know, being in in a sales role and, you know, finding out myself, you know, not as Tim, the military guy, but now Tim, the civilian that's working in loans. So it was, 
like anything, it, it takes time to build that book of business, build that trust with people, those referral partners. Um, and again, kind of, I would say kind of find your voice and how, how you interact with people and how you resonate. So, you know, I would say there's another aspect of trust that you were dealing with, which is you trusted your friend that urged you to come make the transition and you, you trusted that the industry would be, you know, profitable. You trusted that they would give you some guidance, that it was a good move. And then like, you didn't see 19 steps in front of you. You saw you know, two steps in front of you or one. And, you know, you just have that trust to go, let's just put one foot in front of the other, learn as I go, constant, never ending improvement. So I think that's a really interesting um, juxtaposition because now that's what you are asking your clients and borrowers to do is look, you guys might not have bought, you know, many, many, many houses. So trust me, I've got your back. I'll teach you, I'll guide you. And that's, that kind of has come full circle. Definitely. I mean, that goes towards buyers, you know, borrowers that we, we work with goes to real estate agents, you know, for them mm-hmm. to trust me with, you know, their paychecks, really, you know, a client is a paycheck for them and it could be multiple paychecks and multiple referrals, you know, that's a weird way to say it, but that's truly what it is. Yeah. So I look at that, you know, like you just said, every, every step, you know, is a learning opportunity. So, Hey, did this transaction go perfect? Yes. Great. What did I do well there? Well, here's what I did well. Here's what made it perfect. Did it not go well? Yes. Here's what didn't go well. And here's how I I adjust to make and learn from that. So yeah, huge. Because you don't want to make the not even mistake, but you don't want to even want to have the hiccups or the struggle or the stress the next time. So how could we make it that much smoother so that the next time you address whatever the the struggle was, it's it's not even a, a, a you know an issue. So that's huge. So talk a little bit about the kind of programs you guys have. You know, you work with buyers uh, uh, buying a home. You work with borrowers looking to refinance, do debt consolidation, home improvements. What are the kind of uh, uh, services that you offer? Yeah, good. Another great question. And I'll take one step back to my lending journey as well to answer that question. So when I got transferred out of Vail, went to uh, work with my buddy who worked at Fairway. So stayed in the correspondent model for about seven years. And then last year, uh, 20, was it last year? Yeah. July, 2022, me and uh, my partners, Jerry and Abby left our, our company that we were at. It was a correspondent lender and started our own brokerage. Um, the big thing was the market was changing and we saw the market was changing and we kind of saw the writing on the wall that some of these bigger companies will be slower to move and adjust and pivot and be flexible. So we poked around to try to find what was going to be the next best thing. Um, and so we've landed in the broker model and that's where we are now as DNVR lending. And the cool thing about being on the broker side is we have access to, I mean, you could have hundreds of investors if you want, but they'll probably cut you off if you don't send any business. So we keep about 10 to 13 investors. And really what we're looking at when we're looking at investors is we're making sure that each investor will have one thing that they do really, really well, whether it's a DSCR loan for investment properties, whether it's a um, two or three K loan for rehabs. So VA, FHA. So we try to make sure that we're, we're signing with investors that are going to give us value and that we can use them for mm. certain items. You know, condo tells are a big thing that not a lot of lenders lend on. We have a great condo tell um, investor. I'm just closing one today, actually, um, for a property up in Keystone. Um, Two million dollar purchase condo. It's not a condo, but they look at it as a condo tell, so no problem with them. We can close it as a condo tell. So that's really great for us. That's to- unique. Yes, yes, definitely. And that allows us to be very nimble in this market where we can help a wide stroke of investors for some home buyers, second homeowners, um, yeah, you know, VA, so veterans. Um, that's I I don't know if I would say I I have a niche. I'd probably say VA is my niche just because I have a lot of VA friends mm-hmm. um yeah. or veteran friends that use the VA loan. So I've kind of you know, come that of, Hey, Tim's really, really great at VA loans. And that's just because I do a lot of those, but, you know, being on this side, we're, we're dabbling a lot more, um, in a, you know, in a weirder market where how do we help borrowers get into homes through different programs? 
you know, it, there's nothing, I, I want to make a comment slash question, but I don't want it to sound like, oh, anyone can do uh, you know, plain first time home buyer or whatever, because those are standard traditional type loans. But what intrigues me is you mentioned condo tell, and we don't need to go into the weeds of that program, but that's a unique program. And I do not think that a traditional quote unquote bank, uh, you know, captured lender type of a lender would be able to do many of those things. So when you mention you guys are a broker and correspondent lending, and that opens up the flexibility and freedom that you guys have to place special and unique type of programs, right? So that, that to me sounds like it's a really huge win for the realtors and the clients that you're working with. Definitely. And for, you know, for this purchase, this kind of tell, which you're looking at loans, as you guys know, you know, loans come in, you know, very various levels of risk. You know, you mentioned it, you know, the plain Jane W2, great income, great assets. W, I mean, that's just a, a pretty simple loan, right? Then we call yeah. them, I call them vanilla loans. But yeah. when you start looking at how do I offer more, you know, whether we use a DSCR debt servicing, you know, coverage ratio loan where we're not using income, you know, that's great for investors that, my own four or five LLCs or businesses that don't show a lot of income, but they have a lot of cash and they want to purchase. Um, that's a great option. And using, you know, a condo tell where, you know, I've, this is the first time I've ever been able to close a you know, condo tell in my almost eight years of lending. So um, the great thing too, you about found, that is you, you found know, the <laughs> secret, uh, the secret uh, way to get, get them in there. And my thought would be, you know, now that you found that outlet, let's really expand that out and find out who else needs that and and get the word out because um, too many times you hear, you know, oh, well, we just can't do that. And you hear no, but you guys are finding a way to make it happen. And that's really an exciting uh, prospect. Definitely. And I've, you know, this was not an easy loan. I, uh, it's the one that's freshest on my mind. So I usually talk about the most, but we did go, you know, a great thing about the side of the industry that we're on is, so we went with one investor, you know, again, from everything we looked at, it wasn't a condo tell, started going through the process. They called it a condo tell. So we had to take them and move them to a new investor, mm -hmm. which is the investor that we're using now that they're like, Hey, we don't care if it's a condo tell. So yeah. again, going back to what makes us different, how do we stand out? How do we help many people? That's the one way we can do it is we can find that solution for you. We're not stuck with just, here's what we have. And this is all we have to offer. It's, what do you need? Let me go see, let me go talk to our investors and see who has a program that will fit for your clients' needs. And if, you know, we don't, or if we're not signed up with them, we'll get signed up with them quickly. And I love that you I'll described, you. Um, sorry, Mike, I just wanted to add in, I love that you described the risk of the loan because I don't hear a lot of lenders describing loans as risks, right? You know, I'm in insurance and we talk a lot about risk, but, uh, people don't realize that loans are a risk too. And investors look at these loans as a certain level of risk. So when you explain it to them like that, um, you know, what do these higher level risk loans come with? They come with higher rates, right? And we're already in a high rate environment, which, you know, will ebb and flow regardless. But I think it's important to explain it that way. And anybody, you know, listening in or even industry professionals just talking about it as a risk, I think is so, you just hit the nail on the head there. So I really enjoyed that you threw it out there as a risk. Yeah, I, I talk to that all the time with clients because those questions come, hey, why does this rate change with this? Why, hey, my credit score is here. You know, my friend on the street got this interest rate for a similar purchase. Well, like, well, yeah. it's all about risk, all different levels of risk. You're like, well, I can't, I get the same rate well. <laughs> So many yeah, right. <laughs> and really, like, yeah, I mean, I, I, we can't disclose things about the other borrower or other people, but you know, when you have differences in credit score, in income, in whatever, and if the loan to value is so you know much tighter and different, all of those are elements of risk, and I think that that helps to explain why things can be different from one loan or one program or one uh, um, you know borrower to another, because really, that's a huge. Uh, observation risk is, you know, like the, the, you know, impact. It, for sure. And that's, I mean, that's what most people just want to know. They want to strip down layman's terms. What does this mean? How does this work? And, you know, I, I've only used 
people around me for loans. So I don't know what, you know, my competition, how they sound on the phones. But for us, you know, we really try to make sure that when we're talking to borrowers, we're going through that with them of here's why this is this, right? Here's why the credit score looks like this. Here's a loan to value. What does that mean? How does that apply to your your credit score to your interest rate? So yeah, it's, uh, I mean, there's, so, like, it sounds easy, right? Loans sound easy. Um, real estate sounds easy. I think people get into it thinking, oh, I see my friends that do it and they're doing well. I can do it. But when you get into the, you know, like you said earlier, the, the vanilla loans, yeah, anybody can do those. You know, those are super easy. You can let some, let's all, let's uh, uh, chat about this thing that just came to my mind, which is, it, we're all related to risk. Um, and I think that unrealistic expectations or something like, tell me the rest of the story kind of comes into play here. Like you, you have a borrower that's halfway through the process with you. And then all of a sudden they start flaking and not calling you back and like, Oh, I'm going to find something else because they look at this rate. And then they're like, Oh, I can get a better rate over here. Well, all they saw was something on a website or something on at the surface level, but they think it's better, but it's really not because you guys have gone in and gone, Oh, we can get you this rate because, and then, there's this risk level number one, this risk factor number two, and this is your rate. Well, if you jump and go over to this other one and get two, three weeks in, now you might have lost this and you can't come back. So I think that being able to understand the full picture is really important. For sure. Yeah. And that's, I think that's part of being the professional on the front end, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you get a borrower, don't be a menu taker, just, you know, go through the motions. So dive in. What are, what are their needs? Because I mean, we've all been there. We're listening, whether it's your partner or your friend or a client, and you're listening, you're listening, you're listening, and you try to give feedback and you keep missing the mark, but you're really not listening. So we try to really listen to what our clients want. You know, if they're saying, I want this and this and this, and you're delivering that and they're still not happy. Well, it's probably because you're missing something that they're really not saying. So if you take a, you know, a couple of seconds, strip it down and find out what they're really looking for, is it really right? Or is it service? Or is it walking you through? Or you need to show your value. Hey, here's what happens. Here's what makes me different. Yes. I tell my clients all the time, we're not the lowest. We're not the highest. You're always going to find the lowest interest rate online. Go online right now. Go to box.com or yep. Costco.com and find you know, a lower interest rate. But what you're not going to get from them is something that's going to answer their calls. You know, We all say this after hours on weekends. You know, real estate happens on Saturday and Sunday. Get that pre-approval. You want those numbers run on Saturday or Sunday? That's what we will do. You know, if you have a low appraisal, what does that mean? How will we go to bat for you to help that appraisal either come back in at value by doing a reconsideration of value or renegotiating? So, you know, like you said, everybody, you know, you can go online and find a lower rate, but if you don't show your value, you don't show what makes you different, then, you know, your clients are going to flake on you and a some people do just want the lowest rate, right? And yeah. you can't you can't win all those, but for the most yep. part, if you show them the value, they're going to stick with you. But also, yeah. when your clients are searching for someone and they're just looking at rate, they're very rate sensitive. We all know those ones, especially in this high rate environment. But what they're not understanding is that that level of risk that they have can be discovered late in the loan process, and that can change their loan terms that can change their rate. And if you don't have somebody very experienced looking at their um, situation up front, you know, those things get discovered late in the game or even getting canceled, getting the loan canceled altogether and, you know, losing your earnest money, all sorts of crazy things that I've seen happen. And I'm sure you've seen Tim, um, <laughs> it's like just nightmare situations. So it is so important to find someone um, like you, who has experience, who knows what they're doing and can stop those problems from arising late on in the loan process. So I think that just <laughs> goes along with everything you said too. Yep, definitely. Hey, Tim, what do you see in trend wise, you know, like um, as far as the types of business being out there and not rate or, you know, market, because at any given time, no matter when someone listens to this podcast interview, rates may be high, they may be low, they may be in the middle. I mean, they fluctuate throughout the year. You can't do anything about that. But what are you seeing trend wise? You mentioned condo tells. Are you seeing people, you know, buying those kinds of properties for investments for long term? What about short term rentals? You know, things like that trend wise. Yeah, great, great question. So, I mean, I think earlier in 2023 this year, we saw, you know, 2-1 buy-downs, 2-1 buy-downs, 1-0 buy-downs were really 
uh, hot and heavy. And then rates kind of dipped, came down, and those went away, and then rates went back up. So the trend I'm seeing is those two two one buy downs, three two one buy downs are back again. That's you know not anything new for the last few months. Um, but there was a period where you know you weren't getting those seller concessions to do those uh, those loan programs. So definitely seeing that tick back up and stay stay uh, steady. I'm seeing a lot more of these what we call non QM non qualified mortgages. So there's DSCR loans, or um, you know they have some no income loans out there on the investment side too. So a lot more of those. Um, a lot of investors on our end are getting. Um, creative with down payment assistant programs, you know, um, we have a few investors that have, you know, put 1% down and you can buy a house. So wow. I think the big trend right now is how do we make housing affordable for people, right? And it's high rate environment, you know, a slowing economy. So higher home prices. So I think that's the big trend I'm seeing is, and especially from the lending side and real estate side, how do we make it affordable for borrowers to get into the market still in a high rate environment? Uh, and that's a lot of conversations we're having of, it's kind of weird, right? As a lender to talk about a purchase and at the same time, talk about a refinance. Because our goal is always to put you in the best, lowest rate we can right off the bat. So it's just a different different market. Um, so yeah, I think that's the big the big trends I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, I'm starting to see a lot more second home and investment activity. So I think now that the, the economy is somewhat stabilizing, we're kind of seeing a good trend of where we're, we're or I guess a trend of where we're going to be going. Um, I think there's a little bit more investors that are getting savvy of like, hey, I can get in and get a, an investment property at a good price while I might have a higher interest rate. And that just goes same thing with, you know, normal conforming conventional borrowers like hey i can get in this market and get a good price on a good house yes i'm gonna have a higher interest rate but i'll take care of that down the road or mm-hmm. i'll utilize one of these loan programs that gives me a lower rate for the first two three one year um that's where i think the folks that are utilizing that are going to see the fruits of their labor you know a year from now when rates dip which they will they always do um and there's gonna be that flood in the market and those rates with low rates, there's going to come high purchase prices. You're going to have to go bid over asking. It's going to be really competitive. You're not going to get seller concessions. So, I guess that's another thing I've seen a lot of. You know, a lot of seller concessions. You don't have to, you know, give up the farm to get into a house. Now you can go in like a normal healthy market and say, "Hey, I want 10k of seller concessions to fix this. I want to come in asking. I don't want to go 60k over asking. I don't have to do appraisal gap coverage." So, it's a weird. Every every market changes, right? You know, in a low rate environment, it's healthy because there's a lot of buyers. In a high rate environment, it's healthy with low buyers, but the transactions uh, seem a little bit more even. So, yeah, does that help? You deal with what you have in front of you. You make the wisest decision. You get the best guidance, and you move forward and don't look back and say, "What if you you." constant and never ending improvement. And, uh, and I think that's the, that's the takeaway there. So Tim, it's been real, uh, a pleasure talking with you. If someone is interested in, uh, reaching out and connecting with you, what's the best way that they can do that? Yeah, you can, uh, email me at Tim at dnvrlending.com. Um, you can, I don't check LinkedIn that often, but I probably will after this podcast. Um, <laughs> I should be better at that. My buddy's like, Hey, I said you something that day. I'm like, man, I haven't looked at that in a while. So <laughs> probably get a little bit better at that. Um, email is the best. Uh, my cell phone is uh, 303-514-6194. So text, call. Um, yeah, visit our website. We have a pretty cool website. And we're adding states um, every couple of months. So we're trying to grow our our reach in the nation. We, I think we have about eight states right now. So Wow. Hopefully to get that up a little bit more this year. I do love awesome. your website, well, Tim, by the way. I will say that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it's really Abby, pretty. Yeah, Abby on our as the other co-founder, she is the brains uh behind all the marketing and has really just knocked out of the park. Well done. Awesome. Well, Tim, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Thank you for listening to the Elite Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group. To learn more about the topics mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.eliterealestateleaders.com.